Hey yo guys, time for a book review. Now we're going to be reviewing the book that took a lifetime to re uh, to write, which is Hitman, My Real Life in the Cartoon World of Wrestling by Brett the Hitman Hart. Uh, this book is just fascinating. I mean, that's I'll, I'll get to the whole thing in a sec, but like, wow. I mean, just this book was just great. I mean, finished it over the Christmas holidays. I wanted to do a review for a while. Didn't have time, but now we're doing it. Uh, I think the thing that's very interesting about this book is the fact that it's written, it was a three volume thing first that Brett wrote using audio tapes that he kept throughout his whole career. Every town he went to, every country he went to, he kept an audio tape and he just wrote the whole book from there. Uh, as I said, it was a very inventive thing, but the fact that it was three massive tapes. Uh, he shipped out the three versions to publishers to see who would publish the behemoth of the book. And, you know, this. then he then it, they cut it down to one massive book, which is solid, and it's a fascinating page-turner. Uh, since Hart has no connection to the wrestling business, he gives an open opinion on the events and the people he ran into, giving this to the people he felt deserved it, such as Randy Savage, um, Harley Race, and many others, and cutting up the people who we felt were just big assholes like Shawn Michaels, Vince McMahon at some parts, uh, Dino Bravo, and many others. <clears throat> uh, a chance that wrestlers don't get to write that much is the f like, fact that like he's not related to it, so that's the fact uh, very interesting that he, he wrote the book and he's not related to a company. Like most books are now published either by that are the truthful or just by some author who did their research. But for a wrestler to write a book like this, it's very rare. And Hart, he takes, he does it fully, and he even takes shots at himself with the fact that he uh, documents his escapades with numerous women from from all the countries around the world, from majority of the countries he's been to, uh, and cities, and his little dabble in steroid use. Uh, Hart's approach is very straightforward and does not include many jokes like a McFoley or Chris Jericho book was, but he wouldn't really need to because that's not Hart's style. Uh, and there's just so much in this book that it really doesn't need jokes. Um, it's And it takes the meat and potato approach that it works, I mean, which is a great thing because it's most books kind of get scattered, but this book is like, start from point A and go to point A and we're done. <clears throat> Uh, it's got everything a great wrestling book should have. It's got <clears throat> backstage business stories, uh, great ribs, uh, great nightlife adventure stories, in-ring moments and special matches, and the best thing at all, especially from a Bret Hart, it doesn't come off as whiny, because people think that the guy you saw around 97 till career was a whiny guy, but Hart even admits in here, that's what Vince McMahon wanted him to play. They wanted him to play that whiny guy to piss the fans off to help get Steve Austin over as if he wasn't over enough, but to officially make him a mainstay uh, face. Because um, Austin really didn't want to be heel, uh, or face, excuse me, he really liked being heel, but Hart pretty much helped him get to be face and be the megastar that he is today with that company and in wrestling status in general. Uh, among the highlights of this book are some of the stories from the 80s, the stuff from the 80s, because the 80s, they had a whole wide range variety of interesting characters, not only in the ring, but in the backstage part of it. Uh, they're fascinating road stories with the fact that they heart, the whole crew went to, up to Ric Flair's room to try and party, but he, Flair wasn't there, so they all had time, a fun time urinating. Flair's massive hotel rented bed, and they tried to Vince tried to wrestle them, the roster, and uh, he tried to wrestle Jim Neidhart. And Jim Neidhart told me, "If you do it, you're going to be going out the window like in Die Hard." Uh, there's some other great. There's so many great stories, especially some Stampede stuff when Hart and I forget I think it was Dynamite ribbed um, a midget wrestler into thinking that being a werewolf gimmick would be good, and they pretty much glued. Uh, hair all over his face and they couldn't get it off. Uh, and he also gives little tidbits on a variety of the roster as well, like Randy Savage, Coco Beware, who is one of the better stories when he cried because he thought he was going to get fired after trashing a hotel room in a drunken state. And even Duke the Dumps Joe's so you get some insight on him. Also, it's very interesting to see how Hart's relationship changes with the life of Flair, Hogan, Vince, his own family, 
because uh, there's so many like heel heels in his own family, and he's just the mega face. And even WWE Canada head representative Carl Carlo DeMarco. Surprisingly, Bret Hart does not dwell around the Montreal screw job. I mean, he makes it seem that if wrestling fans, if they want a real account of what happened that night, that you should check out Paul J's uh, biography or uh, documentary, excuse me, um, Hitman Heart Wrestling with Shadows, uh, which you really should check out. Uh, no one will know, uh, blah, blah, while the no that no fateful night in November in Montreal is one of the biggest pieces of wrestling history, it just seems like a little piece in this big behemoth of a book, and it just seems like another small chapter that has nothing to do with it. And obviously when a book of this magnitude comes out, uh, it comes out, I mean, people are going to know, where do we rank it on the likes of uh, Dynamite Kid, Mick Foley, J.J. Dillon, and even the WWE released books. But there's two ways you need to look at it. One, this book is so engrossing that you would want to read the original three vol volumes, and I think it would be very interesting if Bret Hart actually did release those those three volumes so we could read it from cover to like that to his whole career pretty much and it would be good business and secondly there's always going to be a great debate on who's the greatest wrestler of all time and obviously Bret Hart's on that list but who would ever thought his catchphrase the best there is the best there was the best there ever will be would relate to a book to his book um, I mean there's just so much I mean the people that he runs into I mean you can tell he genuinely loves Owen Talked so highly of Owen and helping getting him his first two stints there. Uh, shame the Blue Blazer didn't pan out. I thought the Blue Blazer was a good character, especially in the 80s when he was there in 89. I thought he and Kurt Henning had one of the better matches at WrestleMania 5. Uh, um, other stuff that's interesting is when WCW and WWF were running in sort of the same town somewhere. The fact that Hart and he kind of had his official send-off because he wanted to go on good terms and not feel bad about it, that he went out there and, you know, he got to see the guys and get the official send-off. And Hart always stuck up for The Rock when Triple H and Sh uh, Shawn Michaels tried to bury him backstage and with stuff for the in-ring because of the, they tried to make him that stupid green baby face and all that stuff wouldn't let him be him. And Hart just stuck up for him and, you know, Rock is very appreciative of that. So, you know, that's very interesting. And a little side note, Triple H has pretty much been on the book since 1997. So, he's been on the book for now 11 years. So, whatever. Um, he really is disappointed in Vince Russo. Not only for the fact that Vince Russo pretty wrote, much wrote the death and no one's of his, his brother Owen. But the fact that he kept making Brett work after he got that concussion from Goldberg. Kept writing ridiculous angles. Another thing that you should take into consideration about this book here is the fact that, you know, Bret Hart's probably one of the greatest minds of wrestling. Um, I mean, pretty much two examples here. I mean, in ring skill, his classic match with the Bulldog, he did it all himself. He pretty much worked against himself. So, granted, Bulldog was there, but he pretty much, because Bulldog was zoned out on Zoma pills, that worked a great match by himself. And... You know, that's just a great mind, and pretty much his ideas for stuff they should do in the ring from the back. When he, when WCW did their first ever show, Nitro show in Toronto, uh, it was his idea for Goldberg to spear him with the plate, and v Bischoff didn't want to do that. They wanted to, Brett to do a heel thing on the Canadian fans, which is absolutely ludicrous, um, and it was Brett's idea, and you know, many columnists said that was probably one of the better things WCW did in those days, so... You know, overall, I think you should. I'm gonna rate this book a like nine and a half at the lowest. I'll, I think I should give this a ten. This book is probably one, the best book of all time, just from how jam packed it is and how eventful Hart's career is. Not in in the ring and outside the ring. You need to check this book out. Also, check out Paul J's Wrestling with Shadow documentary. We'll be posting links of both where you can get this book and many others. So yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm out. Peace.